keynote speaker is in the house ladies and gentlemen i would like to have your full attention our keynote address is titled building organizational muscle he's been he's been poached enough so i'm not gonna add anything else about the muscles the timing is excellent for us as business professionals to be guided in this area as we as entrepreneurs seek to build our own business muscles in our respective endeavors now we all know those of us who go to the gym not damian <laughs> those of us who don't that muscles is what allows one to endure rigorous testing and equips us to meet our challenges in whatever area now this speaker is qualified both in his role as a senator and in his role as managing director of Crafton Holdings to speak extensively on building organizational muscles. Now, his personal philosophy is influenced to some extent by Sun Tzu's The Art of War. He also believes you, sh you should prepare for anything. Isn't that right, Damien? And you should be prepared to rely on a little gentle persuasion as well. Now, Damien doesn't actually lift any weights. You can probably see that for yourself. <laughs> but he is a proud fan of Liverpool Football Club. And he happily points out that this is since the days of the great Johnny Barnes. He is a, so you know he's not a newbie. A little wannabe that's just joining the bandwagon, as he puts it. Now, Damien is a lecturer at the University of the West Indies, and he is also a self-proclaimed serial entrepreneur. Please, ladies and gentlemen, help me to welcome our keynote speaker, Senator Damien Crawford. Thank you very much, Madam Chairperson. I want to have a special good afternoon to CEO, Mrs. Val Rivera, sponsors, other guest speakers, exhibitors, media, and of course, those who were willing to pay to participate. I'm feeling a little old because I see some of my students becoming the teachers. And Wayne was a student of mine in 2006, it was, or 2005. So clearly it's because me use me not in all a while, I still look so young, but I've been. And I see a lot of my classmates, see a lot of my schoolmates, I see a lot of my students. So, it's good to be here. Now, I didn't know that lunchtime was called shellings because I like to shell on the plates, which is not a lie, by the way. But um, I always complain because me and Jamaicans have a very weird relationship. Jamaicans will see four ministers and say, Minister Hilton, minister, and then say, Damien. <laughs> Let us take my minister. <laughs> but... I said before and I'll say it again. I'll say it again. If the Minister of Health go to every hospital, you say it's a good minister. If the Minister of Education go to every school, you say it's a good minister. Now the Minister of Entertainment go to every party. So this idling. Something is fundamentally wrong. With that, I go to every party. I was studying. I was you know, trying to understand the industry. Um, which is why I went to Trinidad Carnival as well, to understand and learn the industry. But today, I want to have a conversation about building organizational muscle. And I want to start out with the context of what we're here to discuss. Because, and I see another one of my students. We've got to start with the context. Now, context is very important. There's a story about a police officer that stopped a lady in a beautiful car. She's driving this nice BMW. The police stopped her. She says, why you stopped me? Was I speeding? He said, no, you weren't speeding. She said, was I breaking any rule? He said, no, you wasn't breaking any rule. So she said to him, then, I'm going to report you. Why you stop me? You obviously want me to pay you. And he said, okay, before you report me, what if you were being kidnapped? Now, if she was being kidnapped, she'd have glad police stop her. That's the importance of context. So the context for more of establish establishes what kind of country you want, and then what is your responsibility to that country. He said, enough people know what kind of house they want, but very few people know what kind of country they want. So we know we want a house at Jacksonville or we want a house here, there, whatever, and it must be five-bedroom. But you never know and think what kind of country you want. And we don't realize that the country you have is very important to the house that you're going to achieve. I tell the story that I'm building a house now and I'm putting in grill. Come have a thief in country. 
Had I not had a thief in country, I could have saved the grill money and put it in pool. I would much rather pool than grill, but the country that I have, don't me know what kind of house I have to go have. So therefore, the country that you want is going to impact the house that you want. And the context is what kind of country we want. I'm making that the context because a lot of people don't want to say what kind of country they want because if you know what kind of house you want, you know what kind of obligation you have. So if you want a five-bedroom house in Jack's Hill, you have to make sure you have a particular type of job, we we'll pay a particular type of money, and by extension, you can get that house in Jack's Hill. If you don't accept what kind of country you want, they don't have to bother yourself with what is your obligation. And that is why Jamaica have what we call a cookie jar country. No, for you never born them time. But we used to play a game called who stole the cookie from the cookie jar. And then you say, who me? Yes, you. Couldn't be. Then it's who? Number 15 stole the cookie. And the person who was best at the game is the person who blame other people the best. And somehow Jamaicans just continue to play that game even when we don't play the game. So even in education, earlier the month say, yo, listen. I give my children the books, the bags, the teacher what list. The teacher say, I teach everything, the parent what list. The parent say, listen, this pitney what list. The pitney says, company may I follow. Everybody blames somebody else, and nobody will take the responsibility. So we have to discuss within this context what kind of country you want and what is your responsibility. If you join a track team and you say to yourself, listen, we want to have the best medley team. A medley is where one man run a 400, one man run a 800, two man run a 200. You say, I want to have the best medley team. That then said to you, okay, I either have to be a good 400 runner, a good 200 runner, or a good 800 runner. Other than that, it don't contribute to a medley. If to the contrary, say you want to have a good 4x100 team, then being a good 800 runner don't contribute to a good 4x1. So if you decide what kind of country you want, then we are going to have a conversation about what is your role in creating that country that you want individually. So you decide clearly that you want a developed country. In parliament, most of the time we talk about growth, but we don't talk about development. And growth can come without people benefiting, which is no development. So you want a developed country, and you're going to contribute. Barack Obama have this argument where he said, yes, you can. I don't know how much people heard of it. It's clear that before he answered, yes, you can, he asked himself if you could. So he said, can you? And then he said, yes, you can. Now, there's a, that conversation is insignificant to us because there's no question if you can. You can because you must. You must be in business because there is no more role for labor as there used to be. There's really two classes in the world. There is the working class and the business class. We separate ourselves into all different types of social classes. And so you have rich, middle, you, know, you have upper middle, lower middle, you have poor, you have dirt poor, which I understand is different from asphalt poor, because asphalt poor can't pick no mango, dirt poor at least you can't eat. It's a big difference. But you really have two classes. You have the working class and you have the capital class. The working class are those who earn the majority of their living from giving labor. And the capital class is those who earn the majority of them living from making profit. So therefore, those who make the majority of them living from profit, them are the capital class. And those who make the majority of them living from wages, they are the working class. Now, we have confused it to say everybody who are poor is working class and everybody who are rich is capital class. In fact, a man can make very little profit and still be in the capital class because he live from profit. And a man can make a whole heap of wages but still is in the working class. Because him offer is labor for wages. So when you check the real situation now, we are now realizing that there's very little opportunity, or at least much less opportunity, for those who used to offer labor. The factory used to hire 100 people in 1980. You might hire 10 people now. You call it automation and mechanization. Recently, we heard that red stripe of a line where we only need three people for all of the red stripe. So therefore, in 1980, people were used to go look work. No, have to start to create work. People used to seek wages. No, have to start to seek profits. So when Barack say yes, you can. If you don't, you're going to dead, because you have no other way to earn. Because those earning potentials have dried up. I give you a simple example. Premix truck have replaced all who used to mix cement. So people, one time you had a roof, hundred man with bucket and shovel. Now you have one premix truck and two man, ninety-eight man have to go start a business. One time you used to have 50 man with a cutlass. Now you have one man with a weed walker. 49 man need to go start a business. I went to the airport the other day. Come here, visa now. And I went to the airport. Yeah, one time I never had a visa. But I went to the airport. It's self-check-in. 
That is about 50 people have to start a business. We used to go work at the airport. And then when I reach foreign now, and when I say foreign is America, everywhere else is by the name, right? So if I say foreign, nobody said Trinidad. That Trinidad is Trinidad. So when we reach foreign now, right, which is America, we go Walmart, Walmart. They had no cashier. Self checkout. You carry your goods, you scan it. And when you don't scan it, you scan your credit card. I tell people I thought it was for free, so I start to take up extra things. I mean, now I make it be free, I only get three things. <laughs> Take up all some shirt, okay, I'll fit me. Somebody will wear it. That's about a good hundred people, I forgot to look. Start a business. So therefore, because the consumption of people seeking to be labor providers have reduced, those who were original labor providers often now start to look for profit seeking. So those who were wage seeking often now start to be profit seeking. And if you're looking at Jamaica history, you will see that. Like when we lay off people and buy a taxi. He was once a wage seeker, but now that him get lay off, him start running on a taxi and now he's a profit seeker. Right? Good. So we have to now realize that we must be entrepreneurs because there's no place outside of that. And you can't eat for free. If you want to go and part, it is only $20 per day. No, it's so enough when it's a 3000 but it's really $20 a day. No much I go up and part. So therefore, we have to talk to you now, being that you must be an entrepreneur, it is really how it is that you are going to now enter upon this reference. Now, why is it that you're a small business? You're a small business because the original quote-unquote capital class had a lot of ownership of capital and assets. Now, the new capital class, I call them the quasi-capital class, those who were original wage seekers, don't have no whole heap of capital and assets. So that is why they're likely to be small business more than big business. So the man who originally had capital and assets, him say, I'm going to start a hotel in tourism. The man who don't have that capital and assets, say, I'm going to do some craft. Because I have the assets and capital to go into big business. So most of us who are here as small business, it's not like we hate big business. It's not like if we get a bus, we wouldn't make our small business be big business. We just decide that based on the revenue and the access that we have, we are now going to go into a size that is commensurate to what we can afford to do and what we can do. Now, what is the hidden parts? What is the, the, the anatomy of that? Now, I'm clear, I'm glad they say hidden parts. Because most people know the obvious part. Everybody says we want money for the business. But the money is a vehicle. Now, if I'm going to West Milan and you give me a vehicle, do I get to West Milan? Because I can't head east. And if I head east, no matter what vehicle, I'm going to reach sea before I reach West Milan. So you have to understand that before you talk about where you go, you need a map. So most of us say we want the money, and we don't have no map. So all we're doing is driving around. Haven't you heard of people losing a lot of money? Now, if money automatically make a thing sell off, then nobody wouldn't lose a lot of money because he had a lot of money. So therefore, just running down the money might just make you lose enough money. And you keep on throwing money at rubbish. Now, I'm going to try to teach some lessons. Now, there's something where Jamaica people do me all the time. If I make a video and say, whatever costs the other party, it gets shared 1,700 times. I make a video about marketing, it gets shared four times. Somehow they thought that was more important, that it cost the other people. I don't understand it, but that, that's all, right? And then MC, I said, boy, call she mash up, right? So they don't really want to see nothing, right? Good. So I'm going to try to do some teaching now. The map for a business, in particular a small business, is to build a profitable relationship. That's the entire thing where you are focused on. You're seeking to build a profitable relationship. It sounds very simple, but it's actually very complex. What is a relationship? It's no different from boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife. It's no different from any other relationship. In seeking to build a relationship, there are two variables that are very necessary. I'm have to be careful when I put two. So there are two variables that are very necessary. The first variable is time, and the second variable is satisfaction. Now, if you leave here, right, I was sitting beside a nice lady right there, we were having a conversation. If when I go home this evening, I see she said, me and Damien Crawford in a relationship, I'll be saying, this is a mad woman. Enough time hasn't passed for her to say me and her in a relationship. 
So therefore, a relationship is going to require the consequence of time. In fact, most men don't know when they're in a relationship. You and a girl apart, and then you're just there. Nobody told you, nobody asked you. They, you just know. <laughs> you just say, okay, we're together. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Right? So you don't really know. But it takes time. The second aspect is that it needs satisfaction. Because the time component don't come if there is no satisfaction component. So therefore, you meet this person and you say, okay, how you doing? My name is XYZ. Let's go to the movies. When I come pick you up in the taxi, right? And then I reach to the movie. The taxi man said, $1,000. I ask you, where's your 500? Because <laughs> the thing, time rough, you know, you know what I mean? <laughs> we have to save. So I ask you for your 500. The lady start to laugh because they're going to feel fed up. They're going to feel dissatisfied. And therefore, there will be no time the next time I call her. She's like, no, I'm not coming away with you. Because, I mean, I'm going to get vexed money, but I never plan to spend it. Go. Now, to the contrary, gentlemen, you never ask her if you know um, taxi fare. You just pay. You go in, you buy one popcorn, you're trying to be romantic. You buy a medium popcorn. Baby girl takes some, put in on one reserve hand because she wants the popcorn, don't you still have some? You're like, no, B, you can't be doing that. She'll hurry up and eat for you, try to eat more than you. <laughs> some people know that they feel. So she have some popcorn I want and over here said so I eat to the next and like when time is done, we still have some and I don't know about it. So if you're not satisfied, then I ask her again. So we have a look now and say, okay, we want to focus on the hidden part of satisfaction. Now satisfaction is really a hidden part because you seldom know when people are satisfied. You know when he's dissatisfied, but you seldom know when he's satisfied. There's a man who was former Prime Minister of Jamaica, and I'm not calling him, but he said to me once, you've never seen a satisfied man demonstrate. Nobody come and black the road and say, thank God for good work. <coughs> so thank God for bad work. <coughs> so therefore, you know now I'm going to see the satisfaction. So you have to ask yourself, what creates satisfaction? Satisfaction is when the actual is greater than the expected. That is all that satisfaction is. So you come here today and you expect something. That's why now I, I start getting nervous before me speak. Because people start to expect a bad speech. And me, me, me I run out of speech. Because when I see it on YouTube, people start to tell which speech they don't want to hear again. And I'm like, I don't have anything more. <laughs> no. <laughs> and, and Michael was allowed to never have YouTube. He just get the same speech all the time. No, me have to find new speech. But we start getting nervous because if the expectation is high, that's why enough people this time are bright because I have locks. They expect me to sell a broom. I come in and I'm a son, all right. He said, You're well bright because his expectation was there. They don't expect nothing from locks people. They expect peanut. If me did look different, impossible that he may have on glasses, he just say, mm, Not that bright, him, all right. But because I expect 10 and get 100, he said, You're well bright. So what happens is when you create an expectation, the person can only be satisfied if your actual is greater than what they expected. Now, as I say, it's like a regular relationship. One of the reasons why you find that a lot of women get disappointed with relationship after a while is because when you just meet her, you come to talk to her a hundred times. You create an expectation that you and her are going to talk every day. By the time three months time, you start talk once every week. She feel dissatisfied. So I said to the gentleman, maybe you should have called her once a month when you just meet her. So when you start to call her once a week, she's going to feel satisfied. The problem with that is that the consumption is based on the expectation. So when you call her once a month, by the second month, it's a man answer the phone, who this, I call too late. So you don't get the client. So the satisfaction is based on the actual, but the interaction is based on the expectation. So you can't undersell. So your only option is to over deliver. But this thing now get deep now. Get deep. I can tell you whatever you call it at school, but it get deep. Where we get deep now. There's a thing where you call the two-factor theory. And the two-factor theory say that the opposite of satisfaction is simply not satisfied. And not dissatisfied. So, Mister, what's the opposite of satisfaction? Everybody said dissatisfied. And that's a lie. The opposite of satisfaction is simply not satisfied. 
And the opposite of dissatisfaction is simply not dissatisfied. So the two factor theory say that you come in here today and you see some cheer. How much people say, yes, cheer at the best conference this in the world? Nobody. But if you've never seen a cheer. How much people say, what is this? Because Jamaica people always say, I'm going to pay my money. <laughs> if it's free, then we don't take a cheer, but they pay their money. <laughs> so therefore, the presence of cheer did not satisfy you. But the absence dissatisfy you. So the opposite of the presence of cheer never create satisfaction. Now to the contrary, suppose they come in and you see fruit and nuts and two local patty and some chunks. <laughs> yeah, we have some chunks tonight. You don't say the best conference this. But when you never see it, you never say the worst conference this. So what the two-factor theory say is that there are hygiene factors, things that cause you not to be dissatisfied, but it don't cause you to be satisfied. And there are satisfiers, things that cause you to be satisfied, but them don't cause you to be dissatisfied. That is what service creates. When I give you the goods when I'm supposed to give you, you're not satisfied because you get the goods where you're supposed to get. It is how I give you the goods where you're supposed to get then cause for you to say, this more than me they expect. But it get deep because the expectation become the new, ex the, the new, the actual become the new expected. So you give me 10 today, tomorrow me expect 10. Yesterday 10 didn't make me feel great, you know. Yeah, but like, no I want to sell some things. A man come and say, sell me three. I say, all like five. The next day, I'm out of three or five, you know. In the business, if I just feel it, it feel good. The last actual become the new expected. So I say, yo, give me five. So you give three, a three order in Bex now. How come all the three you get? Because you order three, you know what last time you get five. So you have to know what continue you now. That's why I see them big company, Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola could I just go and sell Coca-Cola, you know. But him start go Coke Zero. Him start go Coke Cherry. Him start go be a different thing because Coca-Cola understands say, yo, this Coca-Cola by itself now nah, satisfy me again. Me need something more now. So my all the vibes and teach you now. How is it that you build the satisfaction? Now, none of you are sell things and not sell the wrong thing. Like somebody tell me earlier, I'm not calling her name. She said to me, Mr. Crawford, I sell natural juice. No, you don't sell natural juice. You sell an option for health. Because I don't really want a natural juice. Tell the truth, enough time, things were good for your taste so bad that nobody wants it. But because I don't want that, I will buy it. So therefore, what you're selling to me is long life. In this way. So you really not sell me natural juice. Some people say me I sell craft. You really sell a gift to my friend. I really need a craft. I need something for my friend. If I could buy a car, I would buy it. It's just that I can't afford a car, so this is an option for some of my friend. So you have to understand, therefore, that the foundation of what you're doing is a need. No, I want to start with that. What is the need? A need is a state of felt deprivation. Not a state of existing deprivation, you know. Because some of us deprive and don't know. If you look in your finger right now, you see some white mark. It means they're short of calcium. No, no, I'm not going to start looking on the finger. <laughs> Anybody who see the white mark, automatically now start to feel deprived. He was deprived, you know. But he never feel deprived. Now that him look and see the white mark now. He must say, we well, sell milk. <laughs> he want milk now because he feel deprived of calcium. Are you understanding what I'm saying? No, there's some people who are not deprived, but feel deprived. I mean, sometimes sometime when I feel sad, and there are times when I do feel sad, people really believe that I'm always happy and I always want to take a photograph, including when I'm at the doctor. Say, there the doctor, you're dead, and somebody said, Mr. Crawford, can I take a picture? Like, okay, let's do this because you know, every day is a sale day, you know what I mean? But at the end of the day, you have to realize this that sometimes you're at the home, sometimes you're in a company and feel lonely. You're not deprived, but you feel deprived. Clear for people, them belly full, but them feel hungry. He's not deprived, but he feel deprived. So one of the things in marketing, one of the things in business is to establish a feeling of deprivation. 
So when you see me now, Mr. Crawford, your lip them look dry, man. You want some um, beetroot. If you drink beetroot, it's good for dehydration. That now make me start to wear the beetroot because I don't want to dry lip. I feel deprived. When I go to a place and I say, how much egg you use? You have 100 case? You have it that show all the shell. Where you going to put the shell? No, man. And I just think of the place. Him start to say, we say you're nothing. No, man. Just think of the place. Because you shell. No rubbish. I'm here with it. Him feel deprived. If you not create a feeling of deprivation, then there can be no sale because that is the foundation of purchases. A state of felt deprivation. There's a man who says he used to walk and knock on door and sell door. So when me open my door and I say, Yo, you want a door, what, where you knock on? Where you did knock on? <laughs> you understand? But suppose when me talk to him, they say, But Mr. Crawford, if I kick this door one time, it's going to drop off. And I read the door, I sell it, I sell the security. Then I start saying, You walk on a door, iron door, let me talk about it now. Because I start to feel deprived. So a need is a state of felt deprivation. Now once you establish your product, what is the need that your product can satisfy? Enough people suffer from what you call a myopia, marketing myopia. The perception that a man wants a product. So like when we have put up our curtain now, because I know Jamaica people every Christmas you have to change a curtain. I just thought the thing said. So you have to change a curtain now. And you say, yo, I have the hole, I want to put in the curtain. I have the hole, I have to go down to hardware and lumber. Them sponsor the thing, because we not give them none. If they don't sponsor the thing, I don't get no props. No? All right. You yeah, go to the next place. So you go down to this place now. And you say, yo, I want a drill. And the man say, okay, I have this drill, hands free. No, I don't know it's going to work hands free, but it's hands free. No knives, no dust. Dust consume, it does suck in the dirt and everything. And infrared. Sound like a great drill. But then him come to you and say, yeah, but after 10 million. You just want to put up two curtains. You go back here, you to get a stone, two nail, knock in the curtain. If the wall chip out, you lose the curtain and cover it. We're good again. So clearly you never want a drill. You want a wall to put up a curtain. So if me was a carpenter, maybe me to buy this drill. Because me to make my work easier over the next 50 years. If you only selling a drill, then a man cut him in the eye because he suffer from a myopia. You think your product. Now all of us think our product is the greatest product, you know. And not understand what is the deprivation, what is the need that this person has. Now the need exists, but people now satisfy this need in different ways. We all have needs. We all feel deprived of something at some point. So we have this need. Now it is going to be how we are socialized that calls for what we want. So we come to know, I have a need for food, party done, right? In my studies as the minister, I was partying, and the party finished, I'm going to feel peckish. Jamaican people are going to say, okay, we want some jerk chicken. We feel peckish. The train that man are going to say, hmm, I, I want some roti, or some doubles, or some bus up shot. The Bayesian man are going to say, I want some shark and bake. The St. Vincent man, I got the same one, green figs. Now, I got the same thing as the people like green banana in the evening. I was stressed out. They never have no dumpling, never have no yam. They just buy green banana on the street. I'm like, what kind of, what kind of sorcery is this? What? Green, green banana in the morning. Green banana and saltfish that they might eat at night. Like, no, that is just all of us felt peckish. But not all of us wanted jerk chicken. If you don't understand the socialization, of the people likely to want, then how are you going to design a product to satisfy their needs? As I say, I've got to a lot of countries to experience the events, the entertainment. When you go to a country like Barbados, the girl them, them dance rough. I don't know, like, oh my God, yeah, yeah, dance like that. Trinidad people, them dance like sexy. They have a way, them like wine come over to one part of your foot, and then wine come over to the next part of your foot, and just like, yeah, this matter about, right? Jamaica people, them dance competitive. Like when you go to a girl in Jamaica and say, can I have a dance? She look on her friend, watch her make a mash him up. Like what? <laughs> no, whatever. We can't just dance with me like a regular. <laughs> so you're dancing with a Jamaican girl. And then she just dip. There's nothing in the song to say dip. There's nothing in the rhythm. She just bust a dip. Being the pleaser that you are, you are trying to dip now. But she's coming up, she licking under your chin. You drop down on all these things. 
So that's why I don't go to Jamaica Carnival. Because somebody's got to see me, jump up on me, me a drop, glean out take the photograph. It's going to be in the newspaper. <laughs> so I'm going to really bad with it. So when you check the situation now, you have to understand the socialization of the person that you're trying to sell. So whatever you're selling, you're saying, what is the intent? What is the socialization? What are the more ways, the likely reaction of my buyer? You see, well, that's one of the reasons, Valerie, I want to tell them. Why we say that um, we have, um, in the tourism sector, we say harassment. It's not really harassment, you know. Some is harassment. But the American buy different from how we sell. It's just a difference in socialization. American come and say, how much for this $10? That's the price. That's not our price. That was our recommended price. You have to then now give us a suggestion as to how much you're willing to pay. Then I am going to tell you that you're killing me and we can't do it. And then we agree upon us somewhere in the middle. So when the Americans start walk off, you're going to grab him because you're going to say, where are you going? We don't, don't talk. It's based on how he buys. It's based on his socialization. Based on our socialization, we want soup on Saturday. Based on our socialization, we want dinner for breakfast. We don't go hotel in the America, they're like confused. Like, why are you eating chicken, dumpling? What is going on? Like, you know, I eat a real dinner. It's how you're socialized. So the first thing we have to understand is that there is a state of deprivation, which is a, how much time left? Can we get carried away when politicians get mic, you know, the thing gets serious, you know. All right, cool. Worse than that, boss me on the stage for what you understand? I'm saying that you know what I'm going to say, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, go for the stage and start cussing your party like, yeah, Lodo. So anyway, so, the, so you have a state of the, you have the state of deprivation, and then you have the socialization. Now, demand, which is what you're trying to create. No one to know about demand because of supply and demand. But in business, demand is want, but by income. Somehow we are run down some people who want, and ain't got no income. And all the man who are trust out the shop. Drink out the bar. You can't make the money because you don't understand what demand is. I'm trying to build a relationship, but what is business? A profitable relationship, which means that you have to give me more than I spend. If I build a relationship, it's not a business. It's a boyfriend and girlfriend. If I build a profitable relationship, that's when it becomes a business. I want everyone to understand. I have some video on YouTube and you can go watch it in 12 different chapters. Yeah, yeah, go on and deal with it. So there's this now, demand, want, but by income. But the market are the current and future demanders of my product. So who is my market? The current demanders and the future demanders of my product. Not for we fail because we focus only on the current. And when the current nobody want the product, there is no future. So for example, I can't eat or me used to eat when me are 25. You remember when they used to call me combo are you eh? All me do I eat bun and cheese and orange juice. So when I call a shop, they say, where's the combo? Because that's all I eat. No, me have to eat vegetables and all them stuff. Because I suit on fat, you know, and all them things. You understand? People that cook for me now, they use coconut oil and all them stuff, you know. Can't eat like what I used to eat. So the bun and cheese man, I have to say, who is the next 25 year old? When time this man reached 35. Who is the next person we are going to buy natural juice when this man start making him own a natural juice? Who is the next person we are going to support this business and how I make sure him come to me and not somebody else? So the first thing you have to look upon is who currently want and can afford, which means he might be able to afford in the future. That's why you see you we have Kiara advertised. We can't buy Kiara, you will know, but when time you graduate, you can buy Kiara. So then I make sure you like under. Are you understanding what I'm saying? You have to focus on who want and can't afford but will be able to. And who can afford but don't want. Uggies want the man who have money for knows it. As soon as baby born, you have to want Uggies. So him can't ignore the man when he have no baby yet. Just because he no want no baby yet. You know how much hotel me go and then tell me no. But I'm going back. Because you just don't want it. But you can afford it. 
Are you understanding what I'm saying? So me, I go every day because whenever you're ready to want, like somehow I'm the egg man in Jamaica. Because everything I put up egg, every time JLP beat up PLP and put an egg a ball, every, every time I'm establishing myself, if you want egg, I'm me. Me don't care who I laugh. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Sometimes they put up, how oh, you feel? Feel like a crack egg. Yeah, 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 you must feel like a crack egg. Because when you think about egg, I mean. Because the market is a current and future demanders of your product. Everybody understand where I come from? So we come now to the point where there's a market. And you're going to make an offer. All you're doing is offering me a solution to my problem. Whatever problem I have. If me don't want to cook, I don't want healthy food, you're not offering me food. You're offering me a solution to that problem that I have. When I want to hold in and offer me drill, you offer me a solution to that problem that I have. How much are you write down? What is the solution of your product? And one product can have no solution, you know. Look on sugar and water. If you drop and lick your head, you drink it. But if you're really thirsty, you put some lime egg on again. Enough things have enough. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So I sell egg. To the hotel, it is a health thing. It kills salmonella, so therefore, when you go get the guest, the guest now get food poisoning. The number one source of food poisoning is salmonella. But to the bakery, salmonella is not important because if I bake it, the heat will kill the salmonella anyway. It's not the convenience. So when I go to the bakery and I say, oh, salmonella, I'm not business about that. I'm business about that. I can buy a crack 3,600 eggs. So therefore, it's a convenience. And next man, I say, yo, me only a crack a case of egg, but it's now the health. You have to know what is the solution where your product can offer. And you have to come to that mindset by, well, come to that solution by creating a mindset. You see, our number one problem in this country is an incorrect mindset. Every Christmas, the poorest Jamaicans say what they're going to, to buy. And the richest Jamaicans say what they're going to sell. It's an incorrect mindset. So when time a poor man said Christmas, November, him starts saying, when me I go buy, when me I go buy. So him not even look for where he can sell. Because his only intent is to buy. The rich man now come and start studying them, you know, you want rich? He start studying rich people that try to parry them and learn them, look at style and cover, you understand? So when we say tambourine season, January, them say cherry season, because they make all our money where we did use to buy beer things. So when Christmas time, at that time, they may sell my egg, come learn, say, hey, we don't want a cake, I egg me sell. No, not me, you can't buy cake too. But if you don't earn more than you spend, you'll be poor. It's a mindset. So you're going to reach a solution by what is your mindset. One mindset where some of us have is what we call the production mindset. It says if we can be the cheapest, people will buy it. So somehow we know that's a try to be the cheapest. If that was so, how come Ben sell? There's a pen where you call name paper mate. I don't know if I can say it on TV. I can say it on TV. Because next thing people sue me on it. Paper mate is the cheapest pen. How much paper? I say free. I don't know how much paper mate. But I've never. All madman me say I sell paper mate. Everybody sell paper mate. Call it look blue. Or them have the black one. If the cheapest was the likely to be the most successful, how much I would have a paper mate? Very few. So now I run down this cheapness now, and I realize, say, yeah, that is one way, but that's not the only way. Some people now say that is the product, if we make the best ever product in the world. If we make a car, we can fly over traffic. Everybody will go buy the car, yeah. But then it costs 50 million. So they can't afford to buy it. You try to make the best. Like me, I have a bucket that costs $900. I soon put in a bag. I don't need a bucket. Because this man now is a, man is a hotel man or whatever. I'm just cut the bag through it in there. I'm not really business, but it looks like up on shelf. So sometimes you overspend because the client don't want that. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So the mindset that is the product is also incorrect. Some of you feel you have to force it for me. They call it the selling concept. That if I push it and push it and push it, you will buy. Sometimes when you push it and push it and push it, it make me not like you. Because you push it too much. By the time I'm ready for buy me yet, you may not buy for you, I'm not me yet. The selling concept, the difference between sale and marketing is that a sale is a one-off activity. What I say about marketing? 
that you want time. Your business need time. So a one-half activity cannot be time. So a man who want married, he will wait. A man who wants sex will not. So therefore, if you just want a sale, you're not really busy about what she think or what she feel. Or you just want a sale. No, there's a, there's, a, there's a channel where they used to have on TV. Where they say, do you want a knife? Time up? Okay. Look like I'm going to give them a you know, All right, cool. After this, I'm going to go and like some busy and leave. Because if, if politicians look busy, country not run good. You understand? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to go and like some have something else to do. I'll just cut. <laughs> you understand? Yeah. I really mean, I'm going to go in about me. I'm going to go like a work. I'm going to work. So, <laughs> I joke like that. <laughs> All right. So, when you check the situation now, you have this now, this channel will sell knife. And them say, do you want this knife? And them chop all the tomato out of the sky, chop on the knife, it cut in a two. You say, blow all the knife, you're bad. And then them, them comes and say, not only do you get this knife, you will get this knife. You start saying, hey, me, me want this. By the time them done 30 knife in 1999. You say, no, man, I have to buy them knife. Them knife are the best knife I've ever seen. The only problem is, Jamaica people only use one knife. You cut the bread, then pour it in the milk, <laughs> cut out the meat. A boy, this is on the road, put it aside. See? <laughs> <Just go. laughs> Come back home and screw up the doors one day. <laughs> so all of a sudden, you start to hate the other 29 knife. 39 for 19.99 is a deal. One knife for 1999 is not a deal. So the selling concept, it creates wrong expectations. And therefore, because satisfaction is when the actual is greater than the expected, the selling more than likely causes you to not be satisfied. So the ultimate one then is what we call a marketing concept. It is the perception that you first must find out what people want and then give it to them. You come, when I first started selling egg, I only had a five-gallon bucket. The hotel said, I don't want a five-gallon bucket. Because I sell an omelet at a time. What am I going to dip me in the bucket every minute? So I have to start giving four one-gallon bottle. I'm chose some I'm use it. I'm chose some I'm use it. Find out what they want, then give it to them. So you have to say, I sell natural juice. All right? What you want? No, because me think pineapple guava would taste good. I have to sell pineapple guava. A man don't want a pineapple guava. That's why when them say, have it your way, I want the best thing, you know. Even though I go there, I say, yo, can I have a burger with a KFC drinks? And them say, no. So, something wrong with it. Far as advertisement, you know what I mean? Because I don't want a KFC fries with a Burger King burger, but them say they don't have it the way they, you understand? So, I guess there's a limit. And you have to understand that too. Have it your way of certain limits because have it your way of costs. And once the cost becomes greater than what you can make, if you're willing to pay for it your way, you can get it your way, but there must be some variation than what you think. Tell some man, say, I put in pig. What? And you have lax? I'm going to eat pig. But people do. Therefore, I'm trying to make some money off it. Because I'm not selling for myself. I'm not selling for what people want. They want pig. Therefore, I'm here. <laughs> not for we sell for myself. Now, if me really against it, me not sell out my soul if I go make a money. But if it's just that I don't like it, because me not really rasta. My father was rasta, but me not rasta. But me just go and hold the thing too. My mother them sell out them and eat arm and them thing. They know, so me just have to go and hold the thing. Right? But, uh, yeah, them, them, them sell it out terribly, right? Yeah. My father dead when I was 15. By the time I was 16, I'm a cook. I'm like, what is going on here? So I say, yeah. So I lock up just with the rebel, you know what I mean? <laughs> but um, you know, self yourself. So you gotta do the marketing concept. Now, if you don't learn nothing else, this is the last thing I said to you, I hope you learn this. In business, never fail. You can be failing, you know, but you don't fail till you stop. So enough time, let me tell you. Sometimes, you know, when you know say you owe you million dollars, you know. You get up at 2 o'clock in the night and up on the computer, look on the figures, you know, to make sure, say, oh, the car. Yeah. I'm ready for a green card, because if you have a coat, you have to just cut. But, 
No, it's a stressful thing. A man see the thing in the glean and say, Crawford have an egg farm. Yeah. But when rain and fall in a bridge, you ever get up out of your bed and drive, go St. Mary in a rain because you want to see if the fall them a flood out. But never fail, never stop. Anybody of you we can tell you how much business we start. One time when we say we are keep party, you remember doubles two to two. We are keep party. The government said two o'clock party for lack of me say, all right, my party has start two PM at on two AM on care one more. The newspaper said this is going to be the party of the weekend. Ray, 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 bunks about this, that, muggling across the stage, rainfall. <laughs> me have to borrow two million dollars. Me don't pay twenty fourteen. This was two thousand and five. We don't pay 2014. You remember when we start book straight, rent book? Rent out book, I mean, I make money, and then the bookshop said, but um, we have the rights to distribute book. You know I have the rights to distribute book. Then we go tell for me, and the thing does get. <laughs> I said, big people tell for people, I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> and next time we start a thing, me, yard travel. Every Thursday, we could get room and go to a hotel sometime, Eden is in $5,000. And then people used to plan to go to a hotel from last month, start wait for my price, he don't start losing money, them say, okay, I can't get no more room. And know one time I get lick. But me never ever. That's why a lot of the time I never get back for ton MP. Everybody say, what day am I going to do? I've been doing it a hundred times. Every time the wheel near me, I am back. <laughs> because you cannot fail. You can be failing. You can under seven love. If the game not done, maybe you can't win yet seven. So maybe you stop selling natural juice, you know. But you don't stop being a man seeking profit. He says, sometimes we're too tied to the actual thing, to the outcome, and not to the process. I'm a businessman. If the business now I'm in the morning, I'm a next businessman. But I'm not this businessman. So I'm not Burger King, man, I sell pizza. So, yeah, the man who won Burger King, I'm on local Caesars or whatever. Me see a man in a Jamaica, own fowl, own egg, own hotel, own bread, own the next bread. Sometimes they take up one bread and think a competition, I next bread, I said. <laughs> so what well, me only can do natural juice? What you're looking for is what can I create in value? And value is to just give you more benefits than your outlay. And your outlay is not just your price. I can give you more benefits than your price, plus your future costs, plus your risk. Therefore, if I sell you one pound of flour, that's a product, you know. Because you're not going to go down to flour mills, buy a hundred pound of flour, because 90 pound going to get weeble. I only know someone can knock out the weeble and, yeah. So the strain, I don't know them things. But... So that is a product. If I come and say to you, 10 pounds of flour, sell downtown, I go downtown and buy it and carry it, come at your yard gate, that's a product. So there's so much value. And the greatest thing about a developing country is that it don't have enough things. Jamaica is an opportunity because we don't have enough things. I'm the only liquid egg company in Jamaica. America have 7,000 and something. One of which is about 84 years old. So boy, me is a monopoly in Jamaica. Me would have be a nobody in America. So no for on America, careful. Things where we not have, just go on internet, watch TV, go foreign, carry it, come back. Because there's value to be created. So me don't know what business they come here with. But whatever business they leave here with, must be one where create time and satisfaction. Good afternoon.